Hi there, my name is Justin DiGiulio. I am a professional real estate agent with over a decade of real estate experience. I am a New Yorker turned New Jerseyer. I've been out in New Jersey for a few years now, breaking into the real estate market. I'm sharing with you my perspective of the listings that are on the market, the newest listings to hit the market on a weekly basis. We'll look at the marketing aspect, we'll look at the psychology aspect, we'll look at the first impression aspect of these listings. We'll break down the photos and how the photos are placed throughout the ads. And I wanna give you my perspective at the professional level of what a real estate agent should be doing when they list your home. If you have any questions, you have my contact information on the screen. Feel free to reach out to me. It is my job and I love helping people. Good morning and welcome to the fourth episode of the Real Estate Showcase here in central New Jersey. My name is Justin DiGiulio. I'm happy to have you here watching. What we're going to do is we're going to review the 10 newest properties to hit the market, Somerset County, over 750000 We're going to look at the listings themselves. We're going to look at the marketing. We're going to look at the job that the real estate agents are doing. And we're just going to discuss them one by one. Maybe you see something you like, you want to go check it out. I'd be happy to show you. Uh, but really, I just want to get into the mechanics of what a good listing is. Um, this being our fourth episode, I want to uh, take note that I've noticed we have quite a few active viewers. Uh, with our declining viewership, I at least know that they're actively disengaging from the show. So I want to thank those guys. Uh, also, if you missed me last week, uh, you probably are a fan of the Super Bowl. We didn't do an episode on the Super Bowl, and that's not because I'm a football fan, but I'm really a fan of excuses. So if you're a fan of excuses, then uh, maybe you'll think of a reason not to uh, watch the rest of this episode. But if you want to stick around, let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you the MLS uh, screen, a grab of that, and then we'll pull up the listings one by one, starting with the most recent to hit the market. So let me share my screen. And let's get into it. All right, so you're looking at the Garden State MLS over here. <clears throat> this is just an immediate search. We're going to arrange them days on market. And we are going to start with 6 Elm Ave. That's at our base price uh, to start today. That's at 750000 And for those of you who are new, I think 750000 is really a great starting point where a listing needs to be on point every time. You can't put something at the market at three quarters of a million dollars and screw it up right off the bat. So 6L Math being our first uh, option here. This is Warren Township, 750,000, one day in the market. There's no picture here. So I'm curious about that. Let's open it up and see if maybe there's just an error here as to why there are no pictures. And of course, there are no photos. So 750,000, 0.68 acres. You're looking at home built in approximately 2020, it says. Remarks, beautiful, well-maintained to buy level in moving condition, offered three bedrooms, a clean and hardwood floors throughout. So this is an example of a listing that's just going to go nowhere because what happens is everybody who's looking at listings gets these email alerts or the newest listings to hit the market. People are gonna see this one, not gonna be interested and because there are a lot of options in this price range um, and you're not looking at a mansion, you're not looking at five, six, 10 acres, you're looking at just about half an acre. And uh, guess what happens? They don't get notified about that listing again when it gets updated photos. The only time they get notified about that listing is when there is a price decrease. So uh, they screwed this one up. I guess we'll move on to the next because there's really nothing to look at uh, this uh, six Elm Ave. And I feel sorry for the homeowners here because their agent put up this listing. I know it's a brand new listing, but they put up this listing without all uh, the photos here. So look at the next place. So in contrast to our $750,000 place, we have a $3,175,000 home. This has been in the market for three days. 1350 Black River in Bedminster Township. Let's look at the picture here. Now, it's probably small on your screen. It's also small on my screen. And that's the thing about these initial photos is when somebody looks at it, it's usually very small before they go to the listing and look at the full screen uh, images. So the thing about small images is they need to be very clear, almost like a headshot. A headshot's going to be 
from your chest to the top of your head versus a full body shot or something where you're only taking up a third or a quarter of the frame. That's not a good introduction to who you are. This picture is not a good introduction to what this house is. Let's look at the listing. It's just too blurry. There's too many trees. I see shadow. I see a little house way in the background. Now, I know that price range, 3 million plus, 2 million plus, you're probably not looking at a small home, but you can't tell in this image. Um, all right, so let's uh, get the lot size, three acres on the dot, built in 1983. So this is a $3,175,000 home built in the early 80s, colonial custom home, a fresh modern interior and classic design element blend effortlessly in this authentic colonial farmhouse. All right. Let's look at this first picture here. So what I had expected was that we were looking at the driveway to the home and you had a stone wall, which is what I could barely make out in those images. And you've got this driveway and the house in the distance. Now, these pictures were taken during the summertime, which that's one of my biggest issues with listing something in the wintertime is that you have seasonally inappropriate photos. So when did these guys decide they wanted to list this? My guess is last year. Why is it only hitting the market now? Who knows? Uh, but I guess if you're planning on it still being on the market in the summertime, then your photos will be seasonally appropriate. Uh, and remember, this is these are new listings. They've been on the market for two days. So here is the small home. It looks to me like you're really paying for the land. If this is something that was up your alley. Um, another shot of the stone wall. I think, I think really people want to get a feel for what the land is like and what the home looks like. Um, so here you've got the home. It looks like there's a barn on the home. So I'm hoping for the uh, sake of the owners that that barn is included, but you can't tell here. And it seems to be cut off by a hedge fence uh, but th that aerial shot especially for the nicely landscaped uh, properties is definitely worth it again we're back outside we're now at picture five i want to get into the house i want to get close up on the house i want to get close up on the house and then into the house but we're, i feel like they're holding me back here so let's move on here's your entrance way uh i would say very colonial very unremarkable very fitting in what was expected, um, but you're not wowing me yet. There was that one aerial picture where I was thinking, man, that's a lot of lot of land, but your initial pictures really need to create intrigue and wow. They have to have a certain sex appeal. Here's your small living room with a fireplace. Of course, a wood-burning fireplace because it's a colonial-style home. Dining room. Uh, here's another den family room with the fireplace, different angle. I need something to wow me. Uh, this kitchen is not in line with a $3 million home, but of course you're getting the land um, and it's a nice kitchen, don't get me wrong, um, but not what we're seeing on the market for $3 million. And the, the thing is you can only upgrade the land so much. Here's a little screened in porch. Let's move on, uh, a little breakfast table. Another shot at the breakfast table. Uh, you know, when, when people are listing, when they're choosing the photos to list and your photographer gives you a, a, a an airdrop of 50 photos or they share with you their Google Drive of 50 photos, that doesn't mean you just upload 50 photos as a real estate agent. You need to choose the best. If you were trying to set up your uh, match.com profile and you had somebody do a photo shoot and they took 30 pictures of you. It may not be a good idea to upload 30 pictures. Uh, it might just be a good idea to do three to five. Um, what agents do is way too much overkill on these. Uh, it's a master bedroom. This is a bathroom. Uh, I mean, the upgrades to the home look very nice. Uh, it looks a little dated with the wallpaper trim. Um, again, somebody's going to come, you know, wallpaper trim like that is not. People are not looking for that. <laughs> I'd say they're actively looking to avoid that. And at $3 million to avoid putting work into a home when they do move in. The home looks pretty big. Uh, I like the uh, patio in the back. And lots of windows to that porch. An oval pool. In this image, uh, I failed to get an 
idea of how large this pool is. It looks smaller with this image. So, and it's a wide angle shot. You take a wide angle shot, what is the focus of the shot usually looks smaller. So if you're going to show how big the pool is, maybe not what you would do. Now we can see a three quarter shot of the house. I can see some skylights. I get no impression of the roof, but it looks like maybe the roof is older from, from this angle. So that would be something I would ask about. Now they're showing the barn. I think this is really where you're you're going from that $2 million to sub $2 million property to a $3 million property. I think that's probably how they're justifying the price. But it was not clear that the... Oh, let's go back. It was not clear initially that the barn was included in the house because it wasn't in any of those first initial shots. It was in one of them. And then also there is a guest house. Uh, and I probably would have included my first three pictures probably would have been of the home, the barn, and the guest home. And maybe uh, maybe that uh, aerial shot that we saw initially in the beginning. But this looks like it's actually one of the last pictures. Um, and I'm guessing there's no, and, and that is the last picture. So there's no interior shots of the barn. There are no interior shots of the guest house. They really left us wondering here now at 3 million, you can get some pretty crazy homes on a decent piece of land, not so agricultural feeling, um, as you have in this colonial house, but it, it really is in the uh, eye of the buyer. And unfortunately, you have to get it in front of the eye of the buyer. So I think they could have optimized this a little bit better. Um, I have, I really feel like the photos are lacking, uh, displaying why this home is worth $3 million. And I'm not saying it's not, but I feel the photos are not uh, indicating that. So let's, uh, let's close this one, go back to the, our third option here. This one is 779,000. So I want you to think, that initial home that, well, actually we didn't have any photos of it, but this is $30,000 more than that. So um, they should be pretty comparable. So here is seven Deerwood Terrace and that's in Warren Township. Here's your first picture. This one is close up on the home. It looks seasonally appropriate. And if I was the agent, I would be taking photos now that are with the trees without leaves on them. And then I would be taking new photos in the springtime, maybe late April, when there are leaves on the trees some flowers. Um, but April, late April would probably be the earliest I would I would take the photos. So 779,000. Um, let's open up this listing and take a look at it. Ready to move right in, freshly painted four bedroom home. Uh, Paint isn't usually a selling point. Freshly painted is not usually a selling point. Uh, I love watching the language that real estate agents use in their descriptions of the listings. I notice when I train new real estate agents, the first thing they lead with is hardwood floors. And I find it very rare to find a home that doesn't have hardwood floors <laughs> throughout. So um, freshly painted uh, not something I've actually seen regularly before, but definitely not would not have been my first descriptor of a home. So we're looking at 1.26 acres, 779,000. Home was built in 1983 and renovated in 2019. But by renovated, do they just mean painted? Let's check this one out. Uh, all right. So looks maybe... Uh, um looks like it looks like a good place and not not um I'm, I'm not crazy about this angle just because it's again with a wide angle lens i feel like there's probably some better angles you could showcase this home with um but it looks like it looks like a good place from this uh from this angle i just think you could have done a, a better shot all right so let's look at the next picture this is your i'm guessing the entrance way although you cannot tell from this photo and this one, this looks newer and more modern than the $3 million home that we were in. So I will give them that. And then on to the kitchen. Uh, so notice that we started outside of the house. We walked into the foyer and now we're in the kitchen. So that's, that's I'd like to present the home that way, unless there is something that's really stand out that, that it's going to draw some crazy sex appeal to the home 
and get a lot of clicks. So I like kind of starting further out, moving your way in. Let's look at the next picture. You got your kitchen. Uh, now, nothing particularly special about this kitchen. And it looks a little outdated in the cabinet door department and appliances department. Um, looking at old white refrigerator. Uh, not bad. Um, but I actually like the first picture of the kitchen better. I may, may have left out that second one. And the thing is, it's a vacant apartment, vacant, vacant home. So it's very difficult to envision what this home is going to look like when there's nothing in there. Um, it looks like a great amount of space. This is the living room, um, has a built in, looks like they're new hardwood floors, uh, in every room, these these floors look pretty fresh to me. Um, dining room, dining room from a different angle. Uh, the family room from a different angle. And it looks like there's some paneling on the wall. Yikes. Um, and then you have a, another family room with a fireplace. Um, a shot of a bathroom. A shot of a laundry room. Master bedroom. Master bedroom from a different angle that makes it look smaller. I, I would have just led with that initial picture. It's, it's just show, showing us the bed from both angles. Um, this one actually shows an electric fireplace in the wall, um, but it makes it look very small. When you're taking wide angle uh, shots, I mentioned this in the last home, you're taking wide angle shots, the focal point, the center of the image looks quite small, but what's on the edge of the image ends up looking quite large. And in this case, the focal point being in the room and the bed being in the foreground of the photo makes the bed look huge and the room look small, which is not uh, an angle that you'd want to do of this room. So let's back up. We just found a closet full of clothes. Yeah, every room has been empty. That's interesting. Why is there one closet full of clothes? Another empty bedroom, another empty bedroom. All right, let's get out of the house. There's nothing to look at in here. Just empty rooms, empty rooms, empty rooms. I want to see the driveway. I want to see the backyard. Um, there's an office in here. It looks like somebody's using the office. Maybe one person's living in the house. Uh, that's the impression that I'm getting. And then they left their sweatshirt hanging on the back of the chair. Come on, guys. Tidy up. Clean up. There's literally no furniture in this house. Um, all right. Nice, uh, nice driveway shot here. Um, here's the porch in the back. I think, again, the porch is the center of this photo, um, and it's a wide angle lens. So the porch looks quite small in this image. Uh, but I do love the fact that they got shots of this house on a crisp blue sky day. It looks really nice. Um, you can see it looks like a long driveway here. I, I'm guessing that's just the camera angle, but um, this looks like a good place at the 775. Mark, nothing major that that is driving me crazy about the photos, um, except that everything is in a wide angle. Uh, that's one thing that's driving me nuts. Oh, now we're back into the house. We're back in the garage, and the garage has stuff in it, which is funny to me. It's got tools, it's got beach chairs. Um, oh, wait, we left the house. We went outside. We looked at the backyard. I looked at the driveway. Now we're in the garage, and now we're in the basement. Uh, it's got an unfinished basement here. Oh, and that's it. Now we're out. All right. Um, yeah, I'd give this in terms of listing strength, not as term, not as so much as to whether or not it's worth the dollar amount on the market, but the listing strength, I'd give it a seven out of ten. Uh, it's a nice home, and they 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 got a, a C plus. I would give them in terms of listing strength. Um, the the first three uh, are probably all D's, uh, in my opinion. Well, I, no, maybe maybe we give the three million dollar home also a, a C minus. Uh, all right, next we have 965,151 Anderson Road. This is with Chung Borough. Let's look at the first picture. And the first picture is just a straight on shot of the house. It does not appear to be the wide angle lens. Uh, the only issue I have with this is there are lots and lots of shadows on the lawn in the house. And that's really confusing. My guess is these pictures were taken early in the day or late in the day. But the shadows just add a really confusing, almost creepy uh, creepiness to the image. All right, so we got one and a half acres, 
built in 1955, renovated in 2005. This crisp, sweet home had been, had been totally renovated and updated in 2005 by a builder. The current owner has continued with updating and meticulously maintaining. Inviting, charming, covered front porch leads to spacious living room and dining room and fireplace. Da, 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 da. Okay, so the fact that it had been upgraded in 2005 uh, had been with strange use of the language there, that's all. Let's, uh, so on an acre and a half, so I'm curious to see what the land looks like, the house looks like. You can see these shadows in the trees. That drives me really nuts. It takes away from the actual home because you just have these black dark lines going through the home different angles um this looks big this looks maybe like a home that you see how the it looks like a split level home the side of the right side of the home is only one level i may have taken this photo where that right side of the home was uh on the corner of the frame and you're doing a wide angle frame so it looks bigger and then the left side of the the frame as it gets more towards the center of the focal point, looks a little smaller, just in general, making the house look bigger. Uh, I, I don't know that it would have, but that would have been my approach. And it looks like the next picture tried doing something like that, uh, but they're too close up on the house. Uh, but from this angle, you can see the front porch, you can see the nice paver stone patio. Um, and again, seasonally appropriate photos. Oh, next, all right, now we're in the house. Uh, you get the foyer. Except the there's the only description on these images is eight eight eight. So this agent probably could have, rather than describing the feel of the home in the description, just adding some text to the images. I think would have would have helped. I got a big living room, and this one has furniture in there, so it all comes together so much more nicely. It looks very big because the furniture isn't too big for the space. You get your living room, dining room. I love the ceiling here in the dining room. Uh, another picture of the dining room. Another picture of the dining room and the kitchen. Oh, but we don't go into the kitchen. We go out to the outdoor porch um, with a desk out there. And then another angle, which makes that desk look very small. And now we're in the kitchen. Now, I would say that kitchen renovations vary 2005, um, unfortunately. Realistically, though, with this kitchen, if you wanted to bring it into uh, the current decade, if the cabinets were just painted white, I don't think anybody would notice. Um, but right now, it does look a little dated. I'm not saying somebody, the owner should have painted the cabinets white. I don't. I don't know. I might have tested it out uh, first, but paint is very cheap, and a total kit, kitchen renovation is not. Uh, and this is 965,000. All right, lots of images of the kitchen, every angle. All right. Um, and just another picture of a sitting room, a bedroom, another image of that bedroom, another image of that bedroom. Come on, guys, we, we don't need this many pictures of the same room, bathroom, another angle of the bathroom. Okay, thank God not. there wasn't a third angle of the bathroom. Looking at another bedroom, another bedroom uh, at this point in time. You just want to get out of this house. I want to see the basement. I want to see the garage. I want to see the back of the house. Um, yeah, I don't need to have four pictures. This is another picture of this bedroom. I don't need to have four pictures of every bedroom. Here's a picture of another bedroom. There's a lot of bedrooms here, but I guarantee we'll have another angle of this bedroom. Yep. And a bathroom. And then I'm guessing this is the basement, but you can't really tell because... There's no description on these photos. And then another picture of another room could be a basement. Windows look high, so maybe sub-level basement. Um, and then here's a door to the backyard. Find I can see a door going out to the backyard. Do we get to see the backyard next? Yes, we do. It's got a really nice patio in the back, Paverstone patio. And you can see in this image the actual size of the house. So I knew this is a decent size home. And I mean, we just saw it. 12 and a half back bedrooms. Uh, I, I lost count because there's just so many pictures of the same rooms over and over again. But here you can see the real size of the house. I like that. And another picture, of course. And then another picture, of course. 
Um, and then another picture, of course, on this patio. And then another picture, of course, from a different angle. Um, and then another picture of a smaller terraced area. And then here's an expansive picture of the backyard, arguably the one I was looking for in the beginning. Another picture from further away. Another picture from not quite as far away. <laughs> they just need to choose. Again, remember, the, the, the goal is to create intrigue and get somebody to want to come and see it and fall in love with it. The, the goal isn't to give it all away prior to them showing up. So you want to get the people in there and falling in love with it. Sometimes, you know, if it's a $3 million home, with the exception of what we just looked at, sometimes less is more. All right, let's move on to uh, chimney flues as is no known issues. So Adrian remarks, chimney flues as is with no known issues. To me, sounds like there are issues with chimney flues. Uh, barn stable building as is. I didn't see a barn or stable building. Um, home, homeowner works at home and she has a pet. Okay. Um, curious about the barn stable. We did not get to see that. Um, and why are we drawing attention to these chimney flues? Very, very confused. Let's look at our fifth option here. 204 Sophia Court. Uh, it's three days in the market. 1,269,000 in Wachung. Let's look at this initial image. And the initial image is an interior shot. Now, this is a $1,269,000 home. And this is an interior shot. So I'm very curious uh, what the exterior of the house looks like and why we're not showing it. So let's open it up without further ado. All right, you're looking at zero acres. This has got to be a townhouse. Um, so a million dollar townhouse built in 2021. Uh, let's get right into the pictures because that's really what matters here. Okay, so you got some living space, fireplace. You got a uh, big dining space. Looks like we're on multiple levels here. The dining space also has a mirrored wall. Seems a little retro to me but I guess it gives that uh, illusion of a little more space. If it is a townhouse, you got your dining table, you got your kitchen. I will say the kitchen is pretty in line with what I would expect for that price point. Although if we're looking at a townhouse, maybe I'd expect a little bit nicer for a kitchen. Um, you got the quartz countertop, hanging lights, you got the vented, the hood over the stove. Mac, I do like the contrast in the color of cabinet doors in the island and the rest of the kitchen. That probably would have been my first kitchen image just because it, it's the just showcases that kitchen in the best light. And remember your first impressions, right? Had a little breakfast nook off of the kitchen, which even though the dining room is right next to the kitchen and there's a breakfast bar in the kitchen, but we're at, I guess furniture choice of the current owner is none of my business. Then you've got your deck off the back of the house. Um, you get an elevator, which serves all three levels of your home. That's pretty cool, uh, especially the million dollar mark. I think that's reasonable. Uh, here's your primary bedroom. Of course, another angle of that. And the sitting area in that bedroom. Yes, it is. Um, interesting. I don't know if that needed to be showcased specifically in a photo, but it does show you that there's extra space in the bedroom. You got a very full walk-in closet. You got a very nice bathroom. I'll give you that. Uh, I do. I think I see a bath and a stand-up shower. Yep, there is a bathtub in there. Uh, here's another bedroom, and then another room that's used as an office right now. Uh, half bath, second-floor laundry, uh, finished basement. Wonder if the elevator. Brings you down to the basement, I would imagine so. Um, I'd love to see it just a video uh, in here of this place. You know, the townhouse so much easier to video just because there's so much less space. You're not having to do the outside of the house. A video would have been cool. And then here's your front picture of the townhouse. Um, new construction. It looks nice. Uh, I would give this one a B just in terms of the listing because it's really tough to, to screw that up. 
I, I definitely would have added the video. Let's move on. Let's move on. We got number 6304 April Valley Road at 789,000 on the market for four days in Hillsboro. Uh, your first picture. Um, this is good. Straight out of the house. It's not a wide angle shot. So the nice thing is it doesn't make the house look small. It actually makes the house look quite large. And let's open it up. 0.51 acre, built in 2001. No recent renovations listed. Welcome to the April Valley Estates Hampshire model. Beautifully appointed, on a quiet cul-de-sac wooded lot. All right, let's check it out. Here's your front view of the house. We saw that already. Let's see if we tab through. Here's your foyer. So again, notice this is most commonly how it's done. You start on the outside, then you go to the foyer, then you explore the house from there. Um, and you wouldn't go from the outside of the house to the foyer, up to a bedroom, into the basement, out to the backyard, back inside to the kitchen, if you follow me. Uh, let's move on. It's another angle uh, from the front door. Here's your kitchen that angle of the kitchen and i hate these stainless steel garbage cans i think the shot could have done without that along the rag hanging off of the stove i happen to have a rag hanging off my dishwasher right now but i definitely would have removed that for the photos um all right more kitchen shots Seven hundred eighty-nine thousand. uh so far it, exactly in line what i would expect um here's a family room photo Another angle of the family room, uh, living room or, or office space. Okay, so it's for them, it's their office space. Looks like maybe it could be a dining room. Uh, here's your pantry, an actual dining room. Uh, master, master, oh, this is a powder room. Next one, master bedroom. Uh, it looks from this image like something screwed up with the carpet, and that's really a shame. Probably somebody dragged something heavy across the carpet uh i definitely definitely would not have used this as my primary shot of this room uh, especially with the door open and the lines of the carpet somebody could have done better than that uh, as the agent you always want to be there when the photos are being taken so that you can help kind of orchestrate things and see what's happening in the frame um, without pissing off the photographer too much of course uh, all right then you have a sitting room which showcases a treadmill um and a uh, lazy boy lounger chair here. All right. That, I like the contrast between the treadmill and the lazy boy uh, roll back chair there. Um, so the carpet looks very nice in this bedroom. You can see the vacuum marks on the floor and another bedroom, another bedroom. And then a second view of one of the bedrooms. Okay. Uh, again, Single shots of some rooms, double shots of other rooms. Doesn't doesn't make much sense to me. Um, here's your finished basement. It looks really nice in the basement. I wonder if there is a little wet bar down here. And it does not appear that there is. Here's your laundry room. In the back of the house. Opposite view into the woods in the back of the house. Um, in terms of the back of the house, I feel like they probably could have... I see a little deck little patio area i don't see that showcased um i could have gotten a couple of closer up images in the house but they didn't they just took this photo into the forest and they were out not a bad listing i will give this one a b uh at half acre built in 2001 789 000. seems right right on the point for money there let's look at the next one 59 galloping hill road 899,000 on the market for four days, Bernard's Township. And you can see it's a blue house, seasonally accurate photos, and maybe a little wide of a lens here. Um, it looks like the driveway is in bad shape. Again, photos were taken uh, when the sun was either early morning or evening. And you can see the shadow of the trees across the lawn, which is just really confusing. And the house looks dark. Let's look at the actual listing, 0. 0.89 acres, 899,000, built in 1963. This five-bedroom home 
It is full of sunlight and boasts living space perfect for entertaining inside and out. Let's open it up. Okay, here's your first shot of the house. You can see those tree shadows across the driveway that drives me nuts. Um, here is maybe the photo I would have led with for the first picture, just because it showcases the house a little bit better. Um, and then we're in the house. We're in the living room, right up, right up the bed. Big leather uh, chair, big leather furniture, um, sunken living room. And so I don't know where we are in the house. I don't have any relativity in terms of what the layout's like, but I know that we have three photos of this, these giant pieces of furniture and piano in this room. Um, this room probably would feel a lot bigger without a piano and some giant furniture in there. Uh, oh, and then a fourth picture of the same room um, showcasing the wonderful curtains here. Uh, all right, let's move on. Let's get out of this sunken living room into a little dining area, dining room, dining area. Um, this looks nice. Uh, it looks very busy. Uh, when you have a busy home, you know, less is, less is more. So here they have five stools under the breakfast bar here. Um, okay. Here's your kitchen with this fresh, vibrant red paint and your curtain over the sink here. Uh, very busy, but uh, it's a nice, it's a nice, nice home. Uh, not super recently renovated, and I want to know what's going on on the door here. You probably can't see it, but there's a door with what looks like some scratch marks on it. Um, another angle of the kitchen showing you the refrigerator, which we probably didn't need. And then we're into the office. So I don't really, I just feel like we're just choosing different rooms. I'd like that we saw the kitchen after the dining room. That was kind of nice. But what floor is the office on? It's just on the same floor, the next floor. Let's see, next picture is a uh, half bath. Um, virtually staged family room. So I'm guessing there's nothing in this room. They just threw a bunch of furniture in this room. Uh, and is that downstairs or, or what? Is this a virtually staged family room? Here's one angle of it. And then here's a totally different room. Or is this the family room? with actual furniture in it, or is this virtually staged differently? I don't, this is just bad. This is, I don't even know where we are. It's just the same room. Did they virtually, oh, here's another same image. Did they virtually stage it because they didn't like this furniture? That's what I'm kind of getting. Here's your primary bedroom. Also looks very busy. Uh, it looks like there are three lamps on the, uh, uh, one of the dressers over there. Um, Here's your bathroom. I don't even know what's going on in here. I think this is a bedroom with a desk that opens, but the desk is open and it just kind of looks like a tractor trailer in the middle of the room. Um, another image of maybe a different bedroom. Another image of maybe a different bedroom because the, these, these Photos don't explain. This is bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three. It just says bedroom, bedroom, bedroom. And now we have a picture of what looks like a TV room, but that's labeled as bedroom as well. Uh, and then, whoa. Okay. And then another one that says virtually staged bedroom. So it's the same room, actually. It's the same room. It's just staged differently. It, I don't understand why they're virtually staging some rooms and not others. I said the house looked really busy. Maybe they could have de decluttered it into virtual staging or maybe they just vir over virtually staged it and the house is completely vacant i can't tell here's another half bath with a shower so a full bath i am so confused uh, here's a little patio in the backyard another angle of the patio a different area of the patio in the backyard Another angle of maybe a third area in the backyard. I'm so confused. This listing is just done so poorly. Uh, I don't know what is going on with the house. We've kind of been all over the place, yet now that we've seen all the pictures, I'm just lost. I am just lost. And 899000 this is the first one we've seen at the $900,000 price range. Uh, I like the backyard. They, it looks like they've lit a fire uh, for the photos. Now, I don't know if that's virtually staged also because it's very confusing here. Uh, we got some aerial shots of the house. 
which actually make the house look very nice. Um, I might have thrown one or two of these aerial shots up in the beginning, just so you could have an idea of what was included in the house. Um, but I'm going to give this one a, a, a D because I'm just, I, I'm leaving this listing feeling more confused than it was when I went in. Um, uh, let's see. Um, it says built in 1963 with no approximate renovation date, but I have a feeling that this was renovated more recently than 1963. So uh, let's get out of this listing. That was 59 Galloping Hill. Let's hit number eight here, Harvey Drive, 1,189,000, Bernardsville. Um, and then here is your three-quarter shot of the home. A little far out of frame here, but there are no shadows in the lawn. I like that sky is clear blue. Let's move on. So just under a million bucks. All right, 1.16 acre, built in 1966. And there's no date here for renovation. So that's frustrating because I'm sure it was renovated since the 60s. Fantastic. Six bed, three full bath colonial on large level lot in one of Bernardsville, most sought after neighborhoods. Okay. If it's sought after neighborhood, you don't have to tell people it's sought after because they're seeking it, right? All right. Here's your picture of the house. I like this picture much better blown up. Um, just because you can really see the house. You see the blue shutters. Another angle of the outside of the house. Another angle of the outside of the house, the big uh, maybe oak tree there. Um, actually, I think it's a pine tree. And then even further away, it's just a picture of trees because the house is so far in the background. Here's your entrance to the house. Uh, I They didn't bridge the gap from being so far away from the house to being uh, close to the house. Uh, to being in the house. But now that we're in the house, I think we should move on because we got the door open. Don't want to let the heat out. We all know heat travels from hot to cold, not the other way around. And then uh, you got a spacious living room. Uh, again, this, this looks a little busy in a living room. Maybe not always the first room I would go into in the house. You got a dining room. And then you've got another dining area and your kitchen. Kitchen will probably be the, so I don't know where the living room is relative to the rest of the rooms because it wasn't really shown in the foyer shot. Uh, so you just don't know how you're traveling around. Uh, looks like a nice updated kitchen, not in the last eight years or so, but since the sixties. So I won't give them that. The house does not look like it was built in the, in the sixties at all. So that's cool. Um, Move on, living room shot. Here's another shot of a sitting room next to the kitchen, family room overlooking the pool. Okay. Um, here is a three season sunroom. I really like this sunroom at the million one hundred eighty nine thousand mark. Uh, it's a very nice touch for this home. Definitely, you know, a room like this we didn't see on the places that were sub one million dollars. So that's nice. Another image of this room, of course. Waiting to see some antlers on the wall somewhere in this house. Uh, it's a big office room with a giant wraparound shelf all over the roof, showcasing someone's hat collection. Uh, very personal. I hate, I hate seeing someone's personality in the home. I want to see the home's personality. Um, here's your laundry room with an industrial paper towel dispenser on the wall. And a I saw some brick. So a brick wall inside of here. So um, definitely older home. It's kind of cool. Then you've got a bedroom, primary bedroom. Another shot of the primary bedroom. Here's your primary bath. Very simple bath, but it's nice if it has its own bath. Uh, then here's the hallway, the upstairs hallway. I see. I probably would have led with the upstairs hallway and then showed what else was upstairs. Um, here's another bedroom. Another bedroom, notice these are labeled bedroom one, two, three. Um, another bedroom, bedroom four. And there's only one shot of each room, which is classy. We, you don't need to show more than one shot of each room. Here's bedroom five. And then a large back patio in the back. 
the backyard from the pool. Now, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we saw somebody had the owner of the home probably had included some cell phone pictures of their pool during the summertime. That was nice to juxtapose to photos of the pool where it's wintertime. Um, and the photos obviously aren't as professional, but I think somebody looking at it would get it. This pool really could have benefited from having something with a nice blue sunny day, crystal clear blue water in that pool. I think would look nice. Uh, you can't see it here. I hope if this is on the market in the springtime, they open that pool and take better pictures. But honestly, who wants to open the pool when you're moving? Uh, here's your basement. So back room in the basement. Uh, I see some uh, very uncomfortable looking chairs and uh, another aerial shot of the home. This looks like a solid home uh, on a corner lot here. 1.16 acres, it says. Here's another exterior shot of the pool. Lots of exterior shots of this house. It is a it is a nice looking home, but a little overkill with these. Oh my God. And then another exterior shot. This would have been uh, the best shot of the of the pool from the outside. It just looks really cool with the vines on the on the wall there. Um, and then another exterior shot of the house again. And then another exterior shot of what looks like the fence around the pool. This looks really cool. Why are we just seeing this at the very, very end? Um, because it actually it brings a lot of character to the house. Um, I'll give these guys a, an A- minus on the listing. Uh, great home, though. Really great home. Um, let's head on to option number nine, 779,029 Dutch Town. Har Harlingen Road, and that's Montgomery Township. Here's your exterior shot of the house. Makes the house look very small. I don't think the house is that small, but this is an aerial shot, a drone shot of the house. Really don't like that drone shot. So 0.79 acres, built in 1960, renovated 2012. Immaculate four to five bedroom, three full bath, raised ranch home with custom multi-level Teco block patio overlooking a private backyard with mature shrubs. <laughs> I like the designation of mature shrubs and magnificent flowering trees. All right, let's check out these mature shrubs. Um, these shrubs have graduated college, master's degree, very mature. Here's your, okay, so notice we started far away. I'm not crazy with the angle, this particular angle, um, but then we get a little closer, look at those beautiful matured master's degree shrubs, and we're in the living room. Okay. I would have liked a shot of the entranceway to the house. Maybe that is a living room. Could not tell. Uh, here's a dining room. Here's your very busy kitchen. I don't know what the backsplash is here, but it looks crazy. Uh, so it... Maybe it's a very beautiful backsplash. I can't tell. It just looks like somebody glued uh, $19 worth of pennies on the wall from here. So when you're going to show me the shot, don't have this be the introductory shot of the kitchen. And show me the kitchen in a good light. And then show me the real beauty of this backsplash. But right now it looks scary. Um, this is a be little better picture of the backsplash. It looks like it's very small black squares, which actually could look quite nice but it looks busy with all these reflections on it. So just give me a little close up of it first, which it doesn't look like we're gonna get. Got a curved island breakfast bar. You got your uh, wood burning fireplace, family room, den area, another angle of that. Uh, then you've got some stairs going upstairs. Does that mean we're going upstairs next? Yes, it does. Here's your primary bedroom. Very, very full bath. There are some some strange updates here. Another bed, full bath, full remodeled bath, first floor. Okay, that we were going upstairs, but I guess we're, oh, and they were in the office on the first floor. Now we're in bedroom three on the second floor. So we just went upstairs, came back downstairs, went back upstairs. All right. Um, here's your full bath, second floor. Okay. Not crazy about that green color, but again, I... 
that's my opinion. I probably should leave that out of this podcast. Got to remember to leave my opinion of the, the homes out of the podcast. Really just want to look at the marketing. Um, and this looks like a nice home, by the way, uh, minus that backsplash. Laundry and the exterior patio of the house. I really like this, this patio, very classy. Um, these mature shrubs don't seem too, too overgrown, but they look like they could use maybe a little trimming back, in my opinion. But it's got a great backyard. It looks like a very peaceful, quiet house and a nice chunk of land. Uh, and they've done a decent job showcasing that chunk of land. Again, seasonally appropriate photos. It says 2018 garage doors. I like the fact that the year they were installed is on here because it's new and recent. Now, if they were installed in 1995, I probably would leave 1995 off of there. So the next picture is an aerial photo. I don't know which house this is, an aerial photo. I'm guessing this one to the left, um, but it's not much more center than the one to the right of it. Uh, but you can see the sprawling land around that house. Oh, it looks like there's another aerial shot of the back of the house looking forward. And then a shot of a couple of Adirondack chairs in the backyard. I thought we were done with this listing, but it looks like there's more, more shots of the dining, uh, in the backyard, and then they're showing you the, the yard in the winter time. It's just, the label for the photo is winter yard, uh, and then back to the front view of the house. All right, let's get out of this one. Let's look at our last one here. This is Nine Park View Drive. It's been on the market for four days. Warren Township. 1260000 So we've looked at a couple that are just over the million mark. We've looked at a couple that are in the 700s and one that was just under the million mark. We had the one $3 million home. Um, so I, we want to be comparing this to 204 Sophia Court and 8 Harvey Drive, which were right around $1.2 million. This one is $1.26. So uh, and one of those was a townhouse. And it looks like this one is... Uh, also a townhouse, and that means we'll be pretty quick on this one. Uh, so here is your shot of the exterior of the home. Uh, now I could see maybe how you might not want this to be le your leading photo. If you go back to the last townhouse there, that was uh, 204 Sophia Court. They showed us the interior living room shot. Um, I don't know what would be better, but I can tell you that this... Uh, not crazy about that first shot of this nine park view. So this is built in 2017, 1.26 million with brilliant blend of thoughtful design and quality craftsmanship. This breaking, break, breathtaking three bedroom, 3.1 bath end unit townhome nestled in Premier Warren Crossing. Da -da 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 -da. All right, let's look inside the house. Exterior shot. Uh, exterior shot of the entire community. I probably would have left those for the end. Uh, here's your entryway. Okay. Um, your big, great living room. Big chef's kitchen. Um, I like the approach to this townhouse a little bit better than I did the last one. We just kind of have to show you the kitchen, the dining room. I hate how they're showing you these exterior neighborhood photos i just think it is busy and kind of useless and we just went from outside the house inside the house into the kitchen back outside the house now back into the kitchen so that just use i don't know what they're, they're thinking here um let's see if this one also has the different color cabinets no it does not um all right let's tab through giant big great room picture windows here, um, another uh, picture of the great room with gas fireplace. Gas fireplace is nice in a townhouse. You're not going to be in your backyard chopping down wood. So uh, that's cool. Another picture of the great room. They just keep showing these same rooms. Get me out of these rooms. Get me out of the bedroom. All right, primary bedroom suite. Looks like a big room. Here's your primary bath. Another shot of the primary bath. Uh, here, so this should have been the first picture for your view into the living room. Um, this is the entrance to the home. Not first picture, but first picture of the interior of the house. You get your laundry room, half bath, second floor landing. 
you've got a second bedroom, third bedroom, the main bath with the bedroom floor, and then a lower level sitting area. Anything else going on in this lower level? Um, it looks like it, the lower level has a, it says kitchenette, but I'll, I can tell you it's a full kitchen. It might be missing a full-size refrigerator, but this is a full-size kitchen with a dishwasher. Here's your lower level recreation room. It's a lot of space. You can have a very large size family in this house. The downstairs floor also has a dining table. So are they planning to rent out this lower level space? I don't, I don't know what's going on down here. Um, because the, to have a full kitchen and a dining table is a little funny to me. Um, they're saying this space could also be used as a gym. Yes, I understand what you could do with the, the basement space. Um, the lower level also has an office space bathroom full bath here's a view of the backyard with the little uh, small patio and uh and deck and then here is the unfinished second floor storage very curious where this falls in the layout but we were bounced all around the home you got it you got to start on the first floor move your way to the second floor move your way to the basement or the attic but you, there has to be some progression around the house. And again, these guys love these exterior photos in this neighborhood. And then an exterior photo of a field. Aerial view, Dutterstadt fields. Okay. Um, and it just tells you that these are fields that are multi-purpose soccer and lacrosse fields. But is it close by the house? It doesn't say. Uh, I think it's across the street, but it doesn't say. I'm guessing. Here's your front view of the house. This would have been the best initial image of this listing, and they screwed it up. Um, shame on shame on you guys. And then another aerial view. That's got to be 11 aerial shots of the neighborhood. Come on, guys. Another one. It's not spectacular. It's not spectacular. It looks like some a shot at an Edward Scissorhands if it was made in 2020. Um, so just it's too much too much bouncing around let me uh jump off this shared screen and one want to thank you guys i know it's uh it's a hike to get from the beginning of this podcast to the end of this podcast but uh, i think it's cool to be looking at each individual listing one after the next and being able to compare them and compare the marketing the last one that we saw i would give that in terms of marketing i would give that a, a d also beautiful home beautiful home but the fact that we had 11 or 12 exterior aerial shots of the neighborhood and they were mixed in with the rest of the shots of the inside of the house terrible that one shot that we saw towards the end that was just right up on the front the entrance of the house you could see the whole house in the frame um, but you couldn't see the rest of the community it looked like it was a standalone house uh, that probably would have been my lead up photo and then maybe towards the end i might have shown one or two aerial shots but the thing is you know somebody's got a twelve hundred dollar drone they want to send you 50 pictures of it or you know at least 10 or 12 pictures marketing is an art it's something that needs to be understood and there's some psychology behind it remember if you see a listing that doesn't have a photo you're not going to go back to it or if it looks bad the first time you see it you're not going to go back to it it's just that's just how it works. What sticks in, you know, what sticks in your mind that uh, 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 beautiful things and things that create intrigue. And again, how do these listings hit the consumers? They hit the consumers when they are new to the market, when the consumers get regular daily emails of the new listings. If they get that email and there's no photo or the photos aren't good, they've forgotten about that listing and they're not going to find out about it again until the price comes down, until there's a price drop, because that's the next email they're, they're going to get. Trust me, I get 50 to 100 of these emails a day, um, to which I open just about every single one of them. So I know what's, what's in these emails. And when people are looking for a house, they get a lot of these emails as well. Um, what else am I missing here? Nothing I can think of. So I think that's a really good point to end this episode. If you are interested in buying a home or selling your home, I... I can give you my consultation services for free. Of course, if I help you 
sell. There is a broker fee, but if I help you buy, that's usually paid by the seller. So I'm free if you're looking to buy. But really, I've been doing this for a very long time. I enjoy getting into the technical aspects, discussing the listings, looking at looking at the listings. Um, I really like the marketing aspect of this as well. So hopefully somebody learned some lessons from some of these listings. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Adios. Mm -hmm.